Jeff Stone here with another episode of MagicReviewed.com. Day number, I don't know, 27, I think, of 2015. And we are checking out Jeff Prices in Your Wallet. Um, so what you get is a DVD, and you get two debit cards, which we'll talk about in a minute, and three effects. Now, the main effect is the one using the debit cards, and then there's two bonus effects all for 25 bucks I mean that's pretty sweet considering that you're getting these gimmicks these printed cards I don't know how much these things cost to make but just at a flat you know cost of goods uh, that's a very reasonable price it'd be very easy to charge even ten dollars more for this so um, so let's talk about what you're actually getting uh, the three effects first effect is you have a card selected and um, selected and lost in the deck and then um, this this part of the presentation is a little weird to me, but um, you know maybe you can make it work. Uh, you say, well, let's we're going to generate a random number. So uh, maybe I've got like uh, maybe one of my old debit cards or credit cards here. Oh yeah, here's one. Um, and let's take a look at the last four digits of my debit card there and uh, just add those up. What do you get? Seventeen. Okay. Let's go to the seventeenth card in the deck. Sure enough, it's the two of diamonds. So that's the first part of the effect. Now, meanwhile, you've set this um, this card on the the uh, table, and then uh, you reveal that the card uh, is at the seventeenth position. Then you have the spectator pick up this card and look at it again, and now it says two of diamonds, which is the card they selected. Uh, so you get a little extra bonus thing there, a little a little bonus kicker in that that routine. So. Um, if you don't mind the weirdness of saying, let's just pick a random number from one of my old credit cards, uh, that's, to me that's a little bit weird just because um, it, the, it can be very easy that the spectator goes, well, he has the debit card in his wallet. He knows what it's going to add up to, so he could have done something to make it be at that position. Uh, if you can overlook that, which I think it's overlookable, then this you've got um, a very good, solid, clever method here. Now, depending on which method you use, uh, obviously you know you're going to have to do a little exchange here to go from one to the other. Uh, there's several different ways taught. Some require that you have like four or five other, you know, de you know, debit cards or like I think he uses a subway card or something like that uh, in his wallet. So you'll need five other cards with these for one of the methods. Another method you just use these two cards in your wallet, and that's all. And then there's a couple other methods he teaches. So, all in all, that, that's uh, pretty solid uh, as far as method goes. Now, um, one issue I had, uh, the ad copy is talking about, so let me read a little thing here. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay. Um, the three powerful routine, the magic tricks that can be carried in your wallet at all times. No more fumbling when you are at or put on the spot. No more digging through your pockets looking for props. Be prepared at a moment's notice. Um, each trick has been designed to comfortably fit into a standard wallet, ensuring you're always ready to perform. Um, well, you have to have a deck of cards. Now, that's not the end of the world. I mean, a lot of magicians carry around a deck of cards. I get that. Um, further, the deck has to be set up. And it's not the kind of setup that you can just do with a borrowed deck. It has to be pre-done before you do the effect. So... To me, if you got a deck of cards on you, you're never being put on the spot because if you had a deck of cards on you and somebody just, quote, on the spot says, do a magic trick, okay, even if I don't have my wallet, here's a deck of cards and I can do, you know, 50 card tricks if I want to do, right? So to me, the idea of selling this as it's 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 for when you're put on the spot, I think is a little bit uh, inaccurate um, because you can't do this if you're put on the spot. Because if you were put on the spot, then you would probably not have a deck of cards on you. So, a little bit of a problem there. But that aside, if you like the effect and you think you would do it in your repertoire, and you don't mind that it that you do have to have a deck of cards on you, then great, this is totally good. Um, next thing, uh, before I get to the two bonus effects, um, built in here, these these cards, there's a lot of cool stuff. Um, one is, uh, there's a 1089. I've been a member since 1089 which I'm pretty sure is before Jeff Price was even born. So he was a member when he was in the womb, or even earlier. Um, so uh, you, you get the 1089, you get, uh, if you're a mentalist, you'll know what these things are. 
the look at the logo next to search. It's a triangle inside of a circle. Okay, I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. Number 37 here on the back. Um, there's also a phone number on the card here that if you call it, it's an actual phone number and is a recording or it's it's a, you know electronic computer voice supposedly that tells you what your balance is and your balance will be one thousand eighty nine dollars ten eighty nine so that's two ways to reveal um, the ten eighty nine also built in the back you have um, queen of uh, queen of hearts right there I don't know if you can see that it's in the little strip and then you also notice the three digit number is six 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 and if you turn it upside down that uh, 1134 becomes uh, hell so there's a lot oh and then uh, one other thing um there the digits on the card there of your credit card number uh you'll notice there are no zeros and none of the numbers are repeated more than four times as in every deck of cards only has four of any given number so the idea is you could quote to quote jeff you could somehow reveal that with a deck of cards um so none of those things that i've shown you are explained in there at all if you don't know how to do the 1089 force you can't do this um it's not taught on there if you don't know uh the 37 or the circle and the triangle if you don't know what those are it's not taught um the 666 and the hell they're not nothing's taught there either but at least those they, they were there as more as an idea and not as a revelation to uh, a force or, or a free thought or whatever they're just more there so that you could be creative and come up with a way to maybe work them into your presentation uh, but the 1089 the 37 and the triangle in the circle those are all things where you have to know how to get the spectator to say those things so um, I, I had a little bit of an issue with the fact that they weren't taught on the DVD but when you consider the fact that nowhere on the ad copy are they saying that those are tricks included? Nowhere, I mean, it just sort of surprised you with it. If, they, if he didn't tell you that, I would have never noticed some of those things on here. And so if he didn't know that it was there, then, and it wasn't part of the product to start with, it's just a little surprise. I can't be too mad at that. Um, the only thing that I will, is a funny issue to me, the thing with the number there. Um, again, he says, um, that's you could somehow reveal it with a deck of cards. Well. What are you revealing? Um, let me divine the serial number of my own dollar bill here. You know, I mean, let me predict my weight on my own driver's license, right? I mean, let me predict my eye color from my driver's license. Um, let me predict my credit card number on my credit card. I don't know what exactly the effect is there. That's a little bit weird to me. That aside, back to the main effect. Um, if you like that effect, and you see potential that you might be able to use this these cards here um, then you'll be very happy with the purchase regardless of what the bonus effects are especially for the asking price as long as you keep in mind that you will have to have a deck of cards set up in advance to do this effect now if you're an experienced card worker maybe you'll come up with your own way where you don't need a deck of cards that's set up in advance maybe you can even come up with a way to psychologically force it to a diamonds i don't know anyway um, the other thing I will mention about this card is the you'll notice the logo there, Vista, not Visa, um, which I get, you know, the, it's trademarked or copyrighted or whatever the legal term is. But um, in a couple of places in the video, Jeff is showing you how to use it and he says, oh, make sure you cover the Vista logo there. And then there's another method where he's doing it and he says, yeah, this method's really good because it naturally covers, hides that Vista logo. Um, which means to me that it sounds like to me he doesn't want them to see the Vista logo for whatever reason because it obviously looks fake in his mind or something. I can't read his mind, but I'm assuming there's some reason he doesn't want you to see that Vista logo. Um, then why put it on the card in the first place? You, you don't have to put any logo um, or put it on the back where it's less noticeable or whatever. So I just thought that was a little bit weird too. Enough of this on this trick. Let's move on to the two bonus effects. There's one called Ethan's List, which is, um, if you've seen those photo holders that you put in your wallet, the accordion style one. So you have an accordion style one, you open it up, show a few pictures. They're all different pictures. Then you hand the, the accordion collapsed stack to somebody and you tell them this is your burn book, or as Jeff says, it's his friend's burn book, which apparently a burn book is a thing where you have photos of people that you don't like. 
So it's a weird premise for an effect. I don't know. And you even saw the audience in the video. They, they kind of were like, that's a little weird and creepy. Anyway, that aside, if that fits your persona, fine. Um, but then you have them take the little accordion thing and open it like a book. And they're to think of one of the photos that they see there. And then you turn back around and you take the packet and you put a lighter under it. And then you open it up the accordion and all the photos are there except for one. The one they thought of is burned now. Kind of a cool idea um, and a cool method for accomplishing that. He also shows you how you can use that same accordion thing to force a song um, or to, um, for, what was the other thing? Uh, something to do with apps. I guess, uh, I don't, I'm not a coffee drinker, but apparently Starbucks has little cards that are called the app of the week or something. Or the, and they have a song of the week. So if you get a bunch of those from Starbucks and you put them in your accordion thing, you can use that as well. So it can become a forcing device. It's very, very clever. Um, and, you know, it's a little thick. You know, it's going to take up some thickness in your wallet. And uh, But if you don't mind that and you like that concept, it's very, very clever. And I think you'll appreciate it. Uh, and so you'll be happy with that. Last one is um, Back in Time 2.0. And Jeff put this uh, on his old uh, DVD called Gum back in the day. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you may remember I gave I didn't give that the most um, favorable review. Now I will say this, had I reviewed gum and today the way I write reviews today it would have got a much better rating than it did back then. Back in the day I used to review uh, reviews the opposite of what I do today. You guys know that today I don't care about effect. Back then I was reviewing effect and all the effects on that DVD were gross to me. I was in playing with gum and chewed up gum and stuff with this, and it just looked gross. And so it, it, I gave it a bad review. I gave it, you know, I think it was a 2.5, and it might have even been uh, before I had the whole Jim Rubble Grubble thing. It was a long time ago. So if I were to review that today, it would get a much better review because it did do what the ad copy said. The methods were doable for the most part. There were a few issues here and there. But generally speaking, it, it's a solid product if you like those effects. Well, foolishly, I gave it a bad review because I didn't like those effects. I could go back and change the review, but then I'd have to go back and change a lot of reviews, guys. So, all that aside, um, back in time 2.0, the idea is you have a little photograph of yourself that you claim, you know, is a, an embarrassing photograph that was taken for your, you know, out of your yearbook or whatever. If you're older like me, I'm 42 years old. I'm not exactly carrying around photographs of me from my high school yearbook, but whatever reason somehow if you justify the photo it's a picture of you but it's embarrassing because there's a big old huge wad of uh, like a bubble like a big pink bubble uh, of a bubble gum there and so uh, you're embarrassed by that the photos examined we can let them look at it and they see it and they can laugh at you but then you take the photo and we'll just pretend this is the photo right up to your lips and then all of a sudden you pull uh, a piece of gum with your teeth right off of the photo and into your mouth and then immediately hand out the photograph and of course you're upside down now I guess and your the gum bubble is gone and the photo is examinable and, and your hands are clean and everything very clever method a very visual effect and Jeff's got some really good pointers and tips on how to make that illusion look really good it's a very convincing illusion um, so the only thing that was weird to me is that he was using white gum rather than pink gum which is what's in the picture well, I just use pink gum when you do it is what I would recommend. But that aside, that's a very, very simple uh, effect with a very clever, very easy to do method. Again, something you can carry in your wallet. Now, there is a little gimmick thing that you have to make that goes into your wallet as well that goes along with it that you use when you do the trick. Um, but it's it's the the kind of thing that's not noticed and, and the audience doesn't, it, it's not a gimmick and they don't see anything. So it's not like you have to do some weird apparatus thing with the photo or anything bizarre like that. It's very organic. So those are the three effects. If you like any of those effects, I tell you to get this. Um, I was originally going to give this 4.5 stars. Um, and I hate telling people that I was going to give it a higher rating than I actually do give it. Uh, because they always get mad and want to know why. It's like telling a guy, hey, I was going to give you a, you know, a $5 an hour raise, but I only gave you a $3 an hour raise, right? I, so I feel bad about that, but I want you to know how I think about reviews. So um, if it weren't for the um, uh, the problems with the 
the fact that the ad copy is mainly touting that this is a put the stuff on your wallet, you're good to go. If it weren't for that and the fact that you do need a setup deck for the main effect, that yeah. that's the big reason that I didn't give it up to 4.5 stars. That was the biggest problem for me. And again, th this isn't the kind of thing where I think they're being misleading. I don't think at all that. This was not like they were trying to trick you. I don't think that's the case. I'm just trying to clarify the ad copy, and you're not exactly quite getting what they're saying you're getting. Um, what they're saying you're getting is you put these things in your wallet and bam, anytime, anywhere. In reality, you put these things in your wallet and bam, if you have a deck of cards on you that's been pre-set up, then you're good to go anytime, anywhere, okay? So to me, that's a big distinction. Um, I, I didn't give it really any hit at all for the problem with the, all these things that are on the card that they don't teach. I am not going to hit that, the rating for that because it's just an extra surprise that was added. It'd be one thing if the ad copy were saying, ah, plus you'll learn the 1089 and the 37 and the triangle and the circle and, and all these other effects you can do. It never says that. It never talks about that. Nothing like that. So there you go. That's how I think about reviews. I recommend this if you like the effects. Four stars. Stone status a gem. Time for you to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and listen to the Random iTunes song in the moment, which is... Oh my gosh. Alright. This has happened before. Uh, yesterday, I believe, uh, we had Hank Williams. Maybe. Um, recently, it's just been all country for the Random iTunes song in the moment. Today, we got Honky Tonk Merry Go Round, which is a great song by Patsy Cline. But, um, this happened once before where I had a whole week where I got nothing but country. I got no metal at all. And I was getting a little antsy because I hadn't heard any metal. So, it's official. Honky Tonk Merry Go Round is the random iTunes song of the moment. But, I want to see if I did another one right now, if it would be more country or more metal. Last time I tried this, we just kept getting country. So, let's just see. A Country Boy Can Survive, Hank Williams Jr. Yes, I'm not making this up, folks. Let's try again. Smooth Criminal, Michael Jackson. Not bad, but not rot, not metal. Can't hear it. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I didn't hit the play button. And Faithfully by Journey. You'd think I don't really have any metal on here. Ronnie Millsap. No. Highwayman, Johnny Cash. No. Heart Attack from Demi Lovato. I'm done. I'm not going to do it anymore. I, no metal is coming up. I'm not sure what's going on. Somebody took all the metal off my playlist. Anyway, Honky Tonk Merry Go Round, Patsy Klein is a random my song of the moment. Join us tomorrow on day 28. I think today was day 27. I think I said that right earlier. Um, this has sort of turned into an impromptu wallet week. I had this uh, In Your Wallet thing by Jeff. And then uh, tomorrow on day 28, we're doing the Annihilation Wallet by Paul Carnazzo. Followed by the next day, we're going to be doing the uh, Wallet Transformer by Cameron Francis. Following that, we will be doing the the uh, Tom the I'm sorry the Mullica wallet, um, and I'm not sure what's different about this, but it's it's just a reprint remaking of the wallet or whatever. I'm not sure. And then following that will be the Lookout wallet, and I got a couple more wallets in the closet. I'll dig those out and we'll just get them all done. It'll be like wallet week and a half or whatever. So thanks for watching, guys. Sorry about this super long video. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace out.